afraid of day. And this year, I have decided to sit down with some journalists and you know, basically just have a chat. Uh, so that's what this uh, grouping is all about. So it's a lot of press freedom day. Any experiences that you want to share with us over the period? Okay, so, so let me just do this properly. Uh, Malik, Manasseh, Omahene, Nanaya, Mopat, and Stephen. Thank you for your time. So um, I want to start with challenges. Uh, you all cover stories in different ways and report differently. Uh, so some of the challenges along the way, that's what I want to hear first. Probably start with online. Do you have any challenges? Press freedom. Um, uh, we probably have the biggest challenge. The, we have the biggest challenge precisely because, as you would know, what we do is always is available to people to always make reference to. Now, what happens is. We do publications that do not favor people, and Manasseh will, will, will testify to this. We do a story, the story goes on radio, and people don't have as much problem with the story as it's said as they would have when it is published online, because it's available for radio once it's said, it's gone. And once it goes online and it's available, and people feel that their businesses and their person is under threat, then you yourself become a target. Um, that affects what you do. Mm. affects the freedom that you have to do the things that you want to do, mm. regardless of the constitutional guarantees in Article 162, which says that the freedom of the media is um, hereby guaranteed. But you would have people who try to manipulate you to stop you from doing these stories that, in their view, undermine their business and their person. So that's the extent to which the online aspect of journalism is a big, big issue. So I'll just cross over to Nanaya. Um, yes, it's a bit different. Do you have challenges? Of course, of course. I've been in, in the media for about uh, close to, say, 12, 15 years and worked in a local radio station now mm. on TV. And it hasn't been easy. I know they repealed criminal libel law 2001 which is to strengthen this press freedom we are all talking about, but really, does it exist? Is it real? Does it work in all ways? It doesn't, for You're me. You're able to say whatever you want to say. No, really, because once you say, just like he's saying, people are not so comfortable with it. I remember 2008, during um, the elections, just that it were where Afarijan office was. I was a piece producing then, and then a colleague was there reporting from that end. And when the NDC people gathered and the report did not really go well the way they were expecting it to go for them, they almost beat it up. I had to go and replace it. You understand? Same way, the same thing happened at um, the NPP headquarters 2012. I mean, when another one said to be present then, when the issues were so, tension was so high up there. I remember I also gave a report like that there. And almost about 15 or more people just pounced on me. I had to remove my T-shirt I was wearing when it was branded and had to wear something else. So yeah, there's some kind of freedom, but it's not total. I don't see it that way. They don't give us the room to express ourselves well. You receive threats on your phone. People call you threatening you here and there. Why did you do this? Why are you saying this? Why are you are NDC. If you are not NDC, somebody will say you are NPP. So your freedom really sometimes it has a limit. And although there's no criminality to it. There's some kind of silence somewhere. They don't really allow you to be free. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mofat's reported for the graphic for quite some time. Uh, now you're on retirement. So it's congratulations, the right thing to say at this point. <laughs> well deserved rest. Yeah. Well, as, 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 as a matter of fact, is um, ah, press freedom. Yes. I think that, you see, um, sometimes when you look at all the areas for instance you're reporting on a story 
you speak to all the sides involved in it, you know, then you are covered. Do you understand? But some of us just uh, uh, take the story from one point of view and do not balance it, and so sometimes there are problems. Sometimes you rather have the problem maybe from your supervisors who think that uh, you should have written the story a certain way. But I, I, I have always insisted that I should be left to do what I have to do. Um, sometimes you do a story and say, no, you should not have done this story because you are, this is their stronghold and you should not have done that story that way. But I, despite whichever party I support, you know, I have not told anybody which party I support. I try as much as possible to give everybody what do you call it? A plain <laughs> level, plain. a level, <laughs> you know, field. You know, so uh, everybody is happy that you have done a story. You know that covers every aspect of of whatever you are reporting mm -hmm. on, and that way you realize that if even somebody is trying to bother you about press freedom, you even have the public supporting you because you've done the right thing. But, but with him, if I may ask, I mean, I, we hear editors do sometimes we write your story for you, I try to give you the headlines, and though that's all what you do. No, no, that is not true. It is not true. You see, um, sometimes a story is not properly written. So uh, it will be uh, rewritten to give it the proper grammatical touch, mm -hmm. but not to skew the story in a particular way. Okay. No, I, I don't no, think that it. I mean, don't do that. You know, uh, even, uh, any, even for broadcasting, yeah. you know, when people write scripts, we try to ask them, hey, what is it you want to say? Maybe the main theme that is in the story is hidden somewhere. You want to lift it from the bottom and bring it up yeah. to the top. I mean, I think that these things are. So it, it, is, it is not true that people no, actually. In no, your media house, it's not true. Oh, but that's the reality with a lot of media houses. Because well, uh, where I, I work. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Okay. You can speak for your own media house, but I have friends who work with some of these private newspapers. Mm -hmm. And they tell you that if the story is about NDC or MPP, you should expect it to be written a certain way. So if you write it the right way, you your editor will go and change the story. And then when it comes, you wonder whether it was you who wrote that story. So, so how, it, it, does, how does it make I journalists or reporters like that? Probably feel? before Anas, uh, um, Anas Anas continues, I think that I'm coming from a different background. My, my issue is that, uh, just like Nanaya started, probably she left something out. The issue is press freedom or freedom of the press. It's like freedom of speech. It's not absolute. We, we have that power. We have that force. But probably one, whether the environment we find ourselves in would not come to understand the essence of what we do. And then again, whether the players ourselves, we the journalists, also cherish and understand where we find ourselves. So clearly these are my challenges. It's like we are not appreciated where we find ourselves. We are not we don't see our they don't see our wet. And then we the players ourselves we've also given in to or go to to set some of these minor minor pressures. This so who, who are you trying to please? Well the point is it's unfortunate, but it's difficult to just put a blame on a particular group of people. My worry is, I don't know how we are all caught on aware, because the little knowledge I, I have, during the days of the Charlie Sams and the Beatrice Angels and all those, you see decency, you see respect, you see maturity, you see focus, you see that hopefulness in the job they were doing. But if you relate it to modern day journalism or the, the practice we are doing, I'm sure we've improved, but our improvement is heading towards a particular region or area that really doesn't bring what we need to gain out of uh, the business that we've taken to do. So I, I just want to establish that in as much as we are looking for press freedom is like the freedom of speech is not absolute. Clearly they are going yeah. to be certain interactions. I think, think there's that generally a confusion in our own minds as to how to proceed in terms of journalism practice. And I'm saying this because we have political journalism in this country. You have media houses that exist for the prime purpose of 
purveying a certain political agenda. But in itself is not bad. Precisely, but, but, that is but not now, unethical. But now, no, 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 the I, I agree. But now will be that how does all of that fit into the freedoms the we have as journalists to report free, exactly. fair, credible information? Yes. I, I think that the important thing is that wherever you happen to find yourself in the political divide, you must be as objective and as fair as possible. I think that if you operate that way, you, 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 you will not have as, as much problems as many of our, our colleagues have. People really go out of their way to, you know, to be partisan. And uh, when the matter issues, I don't have no pain. So clearly, we look out for. Yeah, but nobody, nobody forced you. Nobody forced you to do yeah, what you are doing. Yeah, but, but no, oh, but no, 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 that's, that's a wrong perception. That's a wrong approach. You know, the media. There is a there is a sociological principle that the media tends to mirror the existing social mm -hmm. order. Mm -hmm. People get the media their behavior reflects. So for example, you get people who don't even see the worth of the work you do. If Manasi does a story on Sada and everybody descends on him and say, why are you portraying North in a negative way? The question is, do the people he wrote the story for their benefit understand that he is doing this for them, that he's actually throwing light on their issues, on their problems, and pushing for action so there will be a solution. No. So I think that our society is, we're growing, we're getting freedoms from the time of 1992 where uh, the constitution took effect and they set the law uh, in press freedom and took away criminal libel. All those things are laws. But us, as a society, how are we supporting journalists to feel that the work we do is relevant to society. I think we lack that I in our society. And it is I, what I, makes no, I, us question whether we have free, free freedom of press. Really. I, I, don't, I don't, you see, uh, um, people are very discerning these days, you know. And for instance, if what uh, Manasseh wrote is not right, they will know straight away that it's not what right. He, yeah. So, I mean, like I'm saying, once you are objective, once you are doing the correct things, once you are fair to everybody involved, I don't think that you should but, but worry. No, no, no. Seriously, I, people I, I, can go I, I, I out of their way to miscommunicate what the guy has done, yeah, well, to well, misconstrue it in a way, to give it a negative slant. I Which, and, and, exactly. And I, I disagree you know? because sometimes it is not about what you are reporting, it's not about whether you are fair or not. I have people tell me, yes, what you are doing is right. We know there's a problem and what we are doing is right. But what is the motive? So should I have the motive or, or, or the, an agenda or the reason for doing the right thing? Sometimes, as you rightly said, the kind of people you are even fighting for, you have some jobless people on Facebook who insult and vilify you. They don't have any job doing and Jida perhaps could have helped them. But the program is being run down and you are trying to take it up and they see you rather as a challenge. So the good thing about our uh, freedom in these countries, where you go elsewhere, the state is uh, stifling freedom. It happens in many countries. Yeah. But here, the state has given us the freedom. And but then, the people are yet to that really that appreciate it because ignorance is, uh, I think, our greatest threat. Right. Because yeah. people are so ignorant that uh, when they tell them something, oh, it is the right thing he's doing. Oh, but he's, you know, when uh, some say, where were you when ND MPP was in government? You are not doing investigative journalism. All of a sudden, NDC has come in today, this, tomorrow, that. And people buy into that and begin to see you in a different but light. But ignorance. Because this is an, an informed person who knows and accepts that the things you write about are the fact. But believes that because it hurts his political party, mm -hmm. you ought not to do it. And in fact, there is a misguided notion that, look, um, when you do a bad story for the governing party, do another bad story for the opposition party to balance out the bad story you have done. And it, it is not ignorance in my view. It's just that this person is unhappy that you are doing stories that hurt his political party. So on that note, I want to but talk about motive. Can, can we talk about motive? What is it? What is it that? What is it? I don't think that as long as you have done what you have to do, 
you know, for the public to know what is happening. I don't think you should be okay, worried about what other people say. No, 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 Why do you decide to do some of the stories that you do, for instance? But, but before we mm -hmm. get there, I think it's important to clear this. I, I said that probably where we find ourselves as journalists, the society, they've not come to understand the type of business we do. Exactly. Yeah, and we the players. I'm sure we've also not projected or portrayed ourselves out there. I think it's the mother body. A seven, a seven <laughs> a purpose. Yeah, do you understand? Because clearly, we have a traditional or cultural link up or upbringing link up here from where you come from and where I come from. The setting is such that if you want to do something good for the society, you're looked on as the bad person. If the priest or the member of parliament or the minister or the assemblyman or any journalist, even your colleagues, do a write-up about Omar and the in negative form, but it's benefiting the larger public. Is it not perhaps because of your history, you know, like uh, uh, Malik was trying to say, in a previous administration, mm -hmm. you probably will probably not see you do but anything like what you have done Just like the senior colleague said, it is not about just getting yourself to a particular political party or group of persons. The issue is that know what you are doing and do it objectively. If you do that with objectivity, I don't think anybody comes across and says that because you did a story for um, Jida, go and do something on Maslow when President go forward. It is not that. It's it forward work. match. It doesn't work. So, I support his life. Yeah, because I don't. I start to digress a little. The, the, the biggest challenge we have is I think that some of us journalists ourselves, we take the freedom to be absolute, yeah, as yeah, Stephen that. said. Yeah. We, we refuse to we, exercise Yeah, we, we refuse. Sometimes I read a story and I cringe and I ask my colleague, if the story was done by your father or you as a person, would you accept it? Would you find it tolerable? You do a story that is undermining a person, damaging the person's Good integrity time. and it's credibility easy, and yeah. reputation and you have no recourse to find out from the person, is this true? So, so, and so have reported this, is this true? We don't care, we just do the story. We don't ask ourselves whether if the story was about me, yeah. would I be happy about it? And I think that because of this penchant to take the freedom as absolute, and to feel that, okay, if I'm a journalist and I have a recorder and I have a pen, I'm a superhuman and I can intimidate people. Everybody mm -hmm. must run away from me. And when I talk, people must shut up. People take liberties. And that's where I think that we ourselves are endangering the freedoms that the Constitution has guaranteed us. So I guess we can't oh, no, I, I, I think you, 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 you can just say that. I you're think you hit the state. nail right on the head. You know, um, I know cases where people even use the stories they have to threaten, you know, uh, are the people they are writing like, about to pay them, and, uh, and send this you know, this and, and, and so part of the problem, like you said, is, is, is from us, you know. When you are writing, you can just cross check, you go to an MPP program, something happens there, and you see it happening, what do you do? You write about it. You report course. about it. Yeah. And so as you are reporting, and somebody is not is happy is about it, that you shouldn't talk about is it. Is there a difference? Uh, would you say that when you arrive, so it gives you more time uh, to figure out the, the, the type of words to use, for instance, but when you are reporting, you are there on the spot and you are reporting, you are not thinking. Or you are think. you thinking? No, you, you think, but you see. You see, you, you just report think. what you see. You know where it's going mm -hmm. to ask um, the chairman of whatever that, oh, what do you think about this one or whatever? You see, you see and you report what you see. I'll give you a typical example. Mm -hmm. I, I covered the then vice president, um, uh, Karen John Mahama mm -hmm. on his visit to Bupe and in Bupe uh, we went into the time w into the town when there were reports of uh, clashes between the Jinapo faction and one other faction you know so we got into the town as part of the presidential convoy journalists were restricted in the convoy but some of us who wanted to really get to the bottom of the issue stepped aside to talk to people around what happened and some of the reports we had and which we went ahead myself uh, I was at Joy FM at the time and CTFM went ahead to report didn't go down well with um, 
the government at the time and it was a whole issue. I don't want to go back into it because then it will bring up all the kinds of murky controversies that surrounded it. But the key issue is that journalists go on the ground and figures out an information, verifies through the best possible means you have available at the time. Let's say you have a deadline to meet, 12 o'clock you're going on air, you know this issue happened, everybody knows it happens, but you need more information. Those who are affected won't give it to you, you step aside and you ask people, maybe you sample about seven views and they all narrate similar incidents. The question is, do you go ahead to report? Or you, you just wait until you can confirm from, let's say, police commander or anything the next three days. Ah, sometimes you don't get that luxury. So it also puts us in a very tight corner in certain instances. I think there also is a, a difficulty in the in separating journalism from PR. Yeah. Hmm. People in government and people who wield power tend to think that journalists must do PR. Yeah. You must massage the you people. Precisely. The so it's the reason people are unhappy that oh, why are you raking this matter up? Hmm. Yeah, we brought you here, so stick to what we brought you to come and do. Talk about the, the vice president being here and all the nice things that were said. Have a sword and a project that's all. That's what is important. And, important. and, and then and show that on the screen <laughs> and broadcast that on the radio and publish it online. That's what we brought you to do. Once you step out of line to hear from the real people, then people have a problem with that. But the kind of journalism they expect you to do is PR. Listening to the real people. Is a true journalism. It's the reason why when Azure went up north to go toward the Sada areas, Sada management offered to take them round. What they would do is to select which areas to take you to because that is in their interest. So if there is some success somewhere, they will show you that. Where the real story is, they won't take you. There. Are we saying that success stories are not real stories? No. But you want to cover the story, you want to cover a balanced story, and don't forget that when you go out, you want to show that the monies that were expended were expended to achieve results. And you want to show that you don't want somebody leading you to a specific area and leaving the rest of the issues at large. But once they dictate to you what you do, you do PR for them instead of doing journalism. Well, if you look at the Koli Lagoon dredge, for example, there, there had to be uh, arrangements with the World Bank to support the dredging of the Koli Lagoon mm -hmm. and clean it and do what they call ecological restoration. Now, if after two years the project hasn't started, nothing is happening, and the Koli is as dead as it was two years ago, of course, journalists would want to find out what is happening. They'll go there, find the filth and report it and go to World Bank possibly and say, did you give money? They say, yes, we gave X amount of money. You go back to AMA, did you receive the money? Uh, the money didn't come in full tranches. It came in bits and pieces. So we have challenges executing the project. Of course, you're covering all the angles, but this obviously won't be good for somebody and they might feel threatened that you're possibly saying things they didn't want to come into the domain. Now, after three years, we, we, we're there and we're here. Oh, the project will start again because we now have loans approved by the Ministry of Finance. What happened to the first support? What happened to subsequent supports and subsequent announcements? So when you are aggressive in asking those questions, in pushing for the answers so that the people who are affected, the people who live around the Kole Lagoon area, who feel the real pinch of the stench, have you driven past that place before? Yeah. You will yeah. find that there is an urgency to report oh, such yeah. an issue. But you go, you go ahead and you report and you, you become an enemy because so you are stepping on people's toes. You are, you are, are we doing a good job? Are we doing a good job so far? I'm sure with what you're saying, we have not positioned ourselves well as journalists. Our independence is questionable. It's very much questionable because... Why do you we, say we, Yes, it's questionable. I think in few cases, exceptions, exceptions like that of Manasseh's issue. You have journalists who, how do I put it, uh, probably on the lighter, for the sake of bread and butter, they don't have independent minds. Two, where they find themselves working in terms of remuneration, extremely low. Maybe you have a journalist taking 
taking the hundred cities. So now you are introducing a different No, dimension. but it amounts. These are the links to all what we are looking for. If I'm supposed to be focused and objective and fair and firm, it comes with a lot of things. I cannot see that firmity you are looking for when I get to a place and I, I see fifty thousand dollars. Then it is me and my God and my upbringing. It's not about a profession again because the country doesn't even appreciate the efforts of the likes of Manasseh. So when Manasseh and the Anasis did profession. it, when the aunties did it, when the Mufats did it, what was the recognition given to them by the state? Or no, where they find it themselves? Is, is that, I, that, I, that matter? It comes, that matter. It comes, it comes, it's, it's not a good excuse. And let me give, uh, use myself as an example. When I completed GIG and I was doing my national service somewhere, it was the money or the allowances I got. That was the money I used to travel outside of Accra to do stories. I'll make you continue your point. If you get to where I'm coming from, I'm saying this is a unique, this is no. a unique situation. So yeah. let, no. just let him learn. Let me give you an example. We have, we all say, and then the parliament, I am fool. We all, once a while, we say it. Because we, why do we say that? Anybody in parliament is an honorable member, but we do some checks and backgrounds, some demeanors and some pronunciations and utterance of certain members of parliament. We have a cause to be worried that these people are representing our interests. Same, people are into different professions like men of God, not because they wanted to become men of God, because of bread and butter and the vulnerability in the society. They push to that angle. They are prophets, seers, apostles, and what have you. Do a check about them, you realize it's zero. People get into this profession, and it is not like previous, just like I gave those examples. Hardly do you hear something negative about the Beatrice Edus and the Charlie Sounds and the Rockling Clotis and the Moffats. But modern day broadcasters and journalists. Man, I, say, I think you don't have to run away from this. One no, where, 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 where we, I'm, I'm we don't enter. We put I'm just a profit no. ahead of the Exactly, exactly. I was just supporting But is that wrong? No, it's, it's no let, let my answer I, come in. I, then no, I, 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 I was supporting you. But what I'm saying is that it's yeah. not always about how much you are paid. Yeah. Okay? What you're saying, you're perfectly right. But it's not always about how much you're paid. Some of most compromised journalists we have in this country are paid so well, and I know some of them. Okay, you find who are paid so well, mm -hmm. but you meet them at certain places. You hear certain stories about them, and it, it has nothing to do with how much they take. It's about the individual and their commitment to the profession. And I also think there's this thing they call mercenary journalism, because people identify certain journalists and then uh, are able to buy them and use them for. Not only their agenda, but also to counter. You do a story today, let's say about uh, uh, an institution, and the next moment you hear heads of those institutions meeting with other journalists to strategize and see how to also counter, counter mm -hmm. and then destroy your work. And it is happening. So, so we, we don't have a united front. Yeah. And I can tell you, some, someone called me from the north. Oh yes, but the association is not to blame so much. Because, for instance, last week somebody called me that uh, there's this media house that uh, Sada has contracted and they are going around to some of the sites in order to come and counter yours. Mm. So I won't be surprised some of this sort will come out anyway soon. We are not willing to uh, do support one another. When, let's say, Adom FM is doing this, Joe FM will say, well, it is Adom FM. Yeah. Adom, it is, it, it's their job. Yeah. So when, when someone comes to see Joy, Oh, so what I do, my family, we have another side of the story. Okay, even I do, my family, they are saying this. This is what the people are saying. So at the end of the day, we end up fighting one another so instead of getting united. The that we don't have sufficient freedoms. To we, we, we are misusing the freedom. Yeah, we are undermining it. This is Landmark Lounge. Uh, it's a very beautiful place. They are making us really comfortable, and we want to say thank you. Uh, can I offer you another glass? Oh, because of my I school? finished my glass. Yeah, of so you can have another one. Of course. All right. So we want to talk about, unless there's anything you want to add to the previous conversation, um, otherwise we want to move to other countries. The only thing I want to talk about is that I think our journalists and researchers should do better than what they're doing now. For me, I don't see them at all. Yeah, they are supposed to put us together. As Manasseh is saying, we fight each other. Their work is to probably. Maybe if it's quarterly, we meet as journalists, discuss some of these issues, and then with the dues they take, I mean, when somebody's attacked. Yeah. I'm not for two years. 
Well, where oh, I came from, I don't know about I'm all the media. I'm surprised you're talking about these because I don't even know that they're fishing for who a journalist is. <laughs> no, I, 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 it's not about the deals. If uh, the GDA really wants to work, they should get sponsorship to do it. Because we have the goodwill. There's no organization which wouldn't want to be in the good books of journalists. So if they really want to do that, they should be in the position to do it. But that but no, I mean, that's uh, uh, really really so 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 no, I need uh, to get uh, this clarification. Uh, 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 to if be you fair. you come in, but I need to get this clarification. I want to know that controversy surrounding the definition for a Ghanaian journalist, which people fall under that category. Is it certain that anybody in the media comes under that definition? No, I don't think that that, that I well people have say or oh, but I think we should leave that this yeah. place. This, oh, will, I see. this should oh, not yeah, be yeah, a forum. Well, you're talking about views, views, views. But I I I I think that um, I heard the president on one of the networks talking about um, employers of journalists paying them well, so that some of these things that we are talking about would not happen. I think that. That is also one of the problems, you know, because you go to an event, you know, and then you see many journalists from, sometimes they are not even invited, but they will come and then at the end of the day, they want to be given some solid, solid money, money, you they know, share some so that, yeah, they and share some, some would money. even, you know, not publish the story. They just come there. Their friends tell them, "Oh, there's this event coming on." You know, and sometimes it's so embarrassing. You know that journalists should be rushing. You know, it, it's really not. So but I is think it also that true that some some journalists are overpaid. Oh yeah. yeah. Because when you are pushed, you get a lot of money. But, but, but okay. we don't get a lot of money. But let's 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 let people who organize programs to um, really uh, not uh, be bothered about those people, they are not invited to come to their programs. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of them have taken to that, they just try to satisfy everybody. But I think we as journalists should, should be each other's keeper, you know, I think when we go to an event, we know who the real journalists are. We know those who go to embarrasses and all that. I think it is time for us to stand up and weed out all these people because sometimes it really is very bad, you know. And just, I just want to say something maybe final on the, uh, how to get on well. I think there's nothing like neutrality in this world. Sometimes I, I put my TV set on, the two white boxes are fighting. I don't even know their names, I don't know the countries uh, they are coming from. But I watch for about five minutes, then I begin to like one against the other. I don't know anything about them. So when we talk about neutrality, it is impossible. We all vote, we all have friends in the policy. I have NDC friends, I have MPP friends, uh, sometimes uh, business people, we are not living in a, maybe a vacuum or in an isolated island somewhere. So we have relationships. So when it comes to neutrality, it's practically impossible to be neutral. Mind you, as I sit here, as we sit in this country, when it's about time for election, maybe America or China, they may have their preference between this and NPP. That's the reality. So I cannot sit in Ghana and say, I don't care about who comes. But what we can do is to be fair. When it comes to the story, leave your relationship aside mm. and then do it, mm. and then do it well. I think that's the only way we can uh, get the people, the citizens to support us. Because when the citizens get to a time they realize that journalists are even not living up to expectation, they begin to call for restriction of our freedom, then we are doomed because the politician is already looking for such an opportunity. Um, I, think, I, I think that's... Um, a good point from which to move um, the discussion up. I think if we we had the benefit of the restrictions that 
journalists in other countries suffer. We would value that which we have. Last year I was in Tanzania. And the journalists they marveled at the level of freedom that Ghanaian journalists have. The fact that you can walk to the president and ask him questions. The president would avail himself and anybody can ask him questions. You can't get that in Tanzania. Yeah, but generally, our leaders are accessible. Far greater, far better so than better than what Far, exists. far better. You take their newspapers, you can't criticize the government. You can't write a story and criticize the government. You will never get. Yeah, you, you go to jail. I mean, if you go yeah. to Ethiopia, it will be amazing. You, 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 I you to can't Ethiopia do that. And I was surprised about the level of restriction of the press. I mean, the government controls everything. So it's either one newspaper or one TV, one radio. Finish. Nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sat down with this Nothing guy. else. He was a newspaper um, editor in uh, uh, Rwanda. Okay. And. There was a football match and Paul Kagabi was there, according to the guy. They did the, his side one and he was jumping and then they took a shot. Mm. And the shot was such that it didn't portray him as presidential. Mm. And this guy as editor edited the story and then he published mm. the photo. The very next day he was told, a guy is actually a Uganda, but he was in Rwanda doing practicing journalism there. Once the photo came out, the very next day, he was out of the country. Yeah, but here you can take the president's picture and take other pictures, very uncomplimentary things, sometimes even doctor them and publish them and nothing happens. I think we ought to value the freedom that we have and, 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 and appreciate it and, and guard it jealously. From the time where uh, media reports were sunset, and, you know, restricted to favor or the, uh, particular governments and you know up to the time the 1992 constitution came in and we have done incredibly well with the laws regulating press freedom I think that we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves to say that the, the, our system is that close of course we still need more openness that's why we are pushing for uh, the passage of the freedom of information law so that it will give us more access you know that when you make a request to a particular ministry they'll give you 10 days and then that's it you get the information you want it, it will make our work better but I must say that our, our freedoms uh, people envy our freedoms. So, so let's talk about the role that journalists have played over the period uh, with regards to political unrest across the world. Any experiences that any of you want to share from what you've heard and read? Well, I mean, we, we don't have to go outside of Ghana. Far. We don't have to go too far because uh, we have such irresponsible practices here. There are examples in Kenya, Rwanda, like you were saying. Yes, our West is just by the grace of God. When you talk about the Rwanda and other countries, it's so pronounced. We don't even need to repeat them. But look at 20, uh, 2008 election and then 2012, especially 2008 election. We nearly got into that uh, abyss just because of some some irresponsible uh, journalism and I always say that uh, if there's a great or if there's any threat against the freedom we are enjoying as journalists then it is the journalist because the best way to safeguard your freedom is to use it responsibly if you get irresponsible with it and mind you if there's political evil now we become the first target because you can't go and sit on radio and say anything at all. You can't go and then publish anything in your newspaper. So when we are doing this, we should also uh, be mindful of the fact that if a military government comes tomorrow, they will need the nurses, they will need the doctors, they, they will need the teachers, they will need the truck truck drivers and everybody to do their work. But you, the journalist, you cannot work. So if there's any such thing, I think in this country we have so much freedom. Uh, from what I know, it is the public uh, media houses that still need freedom. And even that, it is some of them who are selling the, the, their freedom. Because you go to a particular newsroom and a particular government is in office or in power. And then certain people are so powerful. When they lose, when there's change, uh, the news editor will go to become some, uh, get into some obs obscure position, all of those things. And some of them engineer it. So the public, they still have those challenges. but. 
I think on a whole we have so much freedom. When you say public, <laughs> public, public media, like a state-owned media, state-owned. I, 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 I know what I'm talking about. Okay, I, I, I know what I'm talking about. I, I don't want to mention specific names, but I have experiences and I have friends from within. That when there's change in government, there are changes in health as well. Yes. Okay. So let, let's talk about something yeah, that's like I, I, for a very long know, time. That is, in uh, effect, uh, uh, that is the perception out there, you know. But generally, uh, much as a lot of people think that state-owned uh, 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 media, you know, do not have that kind of uh, freedoms, they do. It's a, it depends on the individual, you know, because I don't remember anybody ever, you know, asking me to do yeah, something that mm -hmm. I don't want to do. Do you understand? I mean, in all the number of years I've worked with the graphic, you know, nobody has asked me to do anything I did not want to do. And there hasn't been changes? Hasn't the heads? No, as in or the heads, yes. assigned to places. No, like but it, it's the media Castello. commission. The media commission uh, is in charge of the editorship and so on. I, I, I have never cared about the kind of politics that, but as far as I know, you know, with the graphic, uh, I don't think that anybody has been asked to do this or that when he doesn't want to do it. Do you understand? I mean, I don't know. Maybe if anyone knows. You will not expressly be asked by the authorities. Mm -hmm. But somehow, within the media house itself, as uh, Manasseh was talking about, there are people who feel that they wield some power and they want to dominate. I did my internship at the Daily Graphic. I don't know if you were there then. I don't remember encountering at the here? time. Um, okay, but at that time, <laughs> um, an attorney general. When I was at Mirror, he was there. An, an, an attorney general um, tried to intimidate graphic at the time because they published the photographs of um, Yatunde Silva and Vatanseva, those two British girls who were arrested with some cocaine at there and were being tried. Attorney general threatened graphic if they published those pictures again. He would take action. Mr. Yobwede Ayabuaf, who was editor at the time, got angry and said they should publish the pictures. If the person thinks that we are in a military regime, he should come and take whatever action he wants to take against graphic. So you does that not sure, tell you? Yeah. Does that not confirm what I just said? But, no, no that, that, that's an isolated <laughs> case. No, 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 what, what I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that when, 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 when you go to individual, like yes, I said, it depends on the individual. And and I said at the beginning that what happens is that you have people from within who make sure that these things happen. And sometimes let's let's let, let, let me let me I don't know whether it was just by coincidence, but when there was a change in government. The head of GBC went, the head of Graphic went, the head of uh, GNA went after 2008 election. That's what I'm talking about. Do, do they have here? Yeah, no, 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 no. They, 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 they are not political. They, 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 they are not political appointment. They, 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 the National Media Commission is supposed to do all of this. But what I'm saying is that. No, what I'm saying is that there's no direct. It's not direct that maybe a government or a president will say, take this person out. But they have people from within. Who always think that well, if this government is in office, this is our time. It is there in the media houses. That is the reality. So can I just find out that where the owner, the owner of the media house, has political affiliation? Does it matter? Does it influence you as a worker in that organisation? It depends. If it's a private um, media house. Uh, yes, some, because we know, as, as we were all saying, that there are some particular ones that are set up basically for that purpose. Like, I went, did an attachment as statesman. At one point in time, I couldn't stay, because whatever I was doing there and what I know and what I want to do conflicts with what they, they believe in, like just writing. Yeah, I no, I couldn't, I couldn't go that way, so I had to leave. But it's not always the case, because... No. Okay, the person could be no, MPP, worked, but you, you have your freedom to do what you want. Before. I worked with Oman mm -hmm. FM too before. I worked with Hot FM before. At no point in time was any meeting of a sort or a direction from whoever calls himself the chief executive or the general manager. Mm -hmm. 
to interfere. Uh, even if there was going to be an inter the interference, mostly what they do is that oh. I can say I say me waka or beya or yetsi mo amo na mo yangu These are they, they come in a very respectable way, not to really tell you what to do. Radio Gold, for instance, you will not get that. You will not get that at Ken City, where even that man who is supposed to be talking loud, you will not. You will not even just have that opportunity to come there. And then, for instance, Hope FM, you don't even see the chief executive. He's called a live boy. He doesn't care what goes in it. Mm. All he's saying that let professionalism work and really let him get the revenue. Because with next two, I have a colleague who we're working together at the flat. I am, am, am at the yeah, 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 FM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oman FM. Yeah, Oman FM. No, net two. Yeah. And Oman FM. These are two separate entities. He was complaining their issues. And some had been sacked because they were not writing or telling stories no, that favor the, the government. Thing, I am that happy this somebody, issue has come. I think that most of the time, because of the attitude of the Honorable Member of Parliament, when that decision was taken on his part, it was about work rate and work attitude. He went overboard. Because clearly, as a chief executive, he comes to work at 6 a.m. He did not understand how the media operates. He was a businessman entering into a different field altogether. He believes that every media person is like a public servant. By 6 a.m., you should be at work. You close at 5. But why are you not in the office? Maybe you are even reporting something. Once he comes to me, the blank space, the ah, now super is not I'm the office, you know, first can when entry of So these were some of his issues. And then one day he comes to the office around 8 o'clock. Nobody is in the office. After 8.30, everybody's entering. Then you stood there, the main entrance and said that, okay, everybody, go back. You're fired. But I don't think that's... So this was not like it, a... It did a not even work out. No, 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 it did not even work out because later he came to realize that he doesn't understand. Yeah, there are certain times, there are certain things some of them will do. It doesn't... Per my experience... Is it good working for politicians? There, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with that because we, we all work, work with people or work for people and everybody has an agenda. Yeah. Somebody even said uh, if you meet a beggar and then you are giving them money, you have an agenda. So yeah. you are giving them money not because you just want to give, but you know, if I give, God will bless me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that is a parochial yeah. interest. Yeah. What our problem is that everything we are doing, blame the journalists. There are some who work for very neutral media houses, but they go in there to promote the agenda of their political parties. Yeah, yeah. And when you go to a news meeting, after one news meeting, you can tell this one is for NDC, this one is for MPP, CPP. It is real everywhere. So I think if you are placing the blame, let's blame the individual. Yeah. So are, are we worried that a lot of journalism schools are coming up in this country yeah. recently? It's horrible. And, and some of us teach in those institutions. Yeah. Yeah, and the standards of training are questionable, but there's nothing wrong with schools springing up. But if these schools springing up will go according to the regulations of the accreditation board, will meet all the requirements of setting their uh, curricula, whether their curricula fits into a specific framework approved by the Ministry of Education, then it's fine. But I'm not sure of anything exists to that extent and a lot of materials are being churned out as journalists and they actually have no skill at all uh, they have no training so you do find that many many of the things we complain about many of the people who uh, do stories which are one-sided with many of the people who write reports and slander the personality of individuals many of these people lack the training that uh, you and I uh, and other journalists may have had, which makes us uh, see things differently. <coughs> well, there are no regulations to ensure that there is a certain quality coming out of these training schools. We have a problem on our hands. That's from who is a journalist. That's where the no, and sometimes we, 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 we destroy the argument when we talk about journalism institutions that we tend to talk about these private and mushroomy ones. Let's go back to the Ghana Institute of Journalism and go to the University of Ghana and say School of Communication Studies. What makes uh, a particular school a journalism training institution? Is it the building or what they have? Mm -hmm. I went to the Roos University in South Africa and if you look at their uh, Department of Communications, the materials they have, not many TV or radio stations in this country can boast of those materials. Cameras, editing suits, everything is there. So when you get in there, even their entrance, 
their washroom, when you get into their washroom, they have journalism quotations. Uh, the South African uh, Constitution, the part which talks about journalism and their freedom, they have it all over. Everywhere you enter in that institution. So you get in there, you come out as a journalist, you know what you are doing. But go to the Ghana Institute of Journalism and they have practically nothing apart from the textbooks and a lot of these things are coming from. We have teachers. Oh no, and, and I'm, I'm, I know this one, this one, some, when I say some people get, get angry at me, but what is also the quality of the teachers? Go to the Ghana Law School and you have high court judges, Supreme Court judges and very renowned lawyers who teach in the law school. You go to some of our journalism institutions and you have people teaching journalism who have never practiced. As for reading to teach, it is important, but you also have to come in with a particular background. So I think going that, that forward... Comes, that, that comes um, by cost. I mean, many no, of no, 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 no. come pay. No, what, what, what I'm saying is that we, we, university we, we, we have them. Um, it was good that a person coming from the, the field was teaching, but the pay was nothing to write home about. So after I did uh, a, a semester or two, I just stopped because no, I'm, I didn't I'm think that I'm talking about this, this, this state one. If you take GIA, for instance, I think people like George Senior Bukuri, who have had very good experience in journalism, Kofi Akwado, okay? After some time, this people, uh, Doris Yadate, this people should go back to the classroom and yourself. Oh, yeah. uh, it, comes to, it comes to me as though we're making a call for uh, <laughs> <laughs> as, as a matter of fact, um, you know, um, you'll be surprised if I told you that uh, Ya yeah, that it taught me at the at the school of uh, GIJ. Wow. You know, she had just finished, you know, uh, as a young and she came in to teach us. And you know, we're all we we played with her because she was your co equal. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, we learned so much from there. We don't have all the things that you are talking about, you know, all the equipment and all that. But you see, but it's the quality of what you are you are you are you are taught. And the thing is that you must have the passion for the for the job. You know. And many of the young people who are coming into journalism these days do that because there's, there's no way to go, so they just branch there. That is, that is what I think. So when they go in, they don't really uh, take their time to learn the ropes. Um, when you go on attachments, when you go for practical training, you are supposed to learn on the job. And this is where most of us, you know, cut our teeth. You know, you learn from the experience. Even when I came out as um, a journalist and I was, I worked with people like uh, Lee Akoli, who had been there for so long. You know, those days you had to plan the page. I mean, this time, the, these days the computers are there for you. But those days you have to take the, uh, you know, the sheet and learn how you know you the number of you know lines and all that to plan the pages. And we learned all these things, you know, because we wanted to work as journalists, you know. So the young people who are coming in must be committed, you know, and learn the right things. They should not just go for the money, you know. But when we were going in, we were told that if you want to be a journalist don't think of making any money in journalism. But it's changing now. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's changing now. That's what I'm saying. Are you proud journalists? I mean, is a job that I you, think, I you my, regret I think, I think or do not regret doing? Yeah, I can say I, I'm proud to be a, a journalist, especially in Ghana, and to be with one of the finest media houses in Ghana. And oh, the finest? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not one of us. <laughs> I'm privileged to be there, so we all probably to add up to what Uncle Bufat is saying. The key here is your integrity and your credibility and the passion. I'm sure a combination of these three forces, it makes you who you want to be in this profession we've chosen. It's not that easy. I'm sure it's quite, 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 quite a great and a good job uh, to do as a journalist, be a broadcast journalist or a journalist. So I'm proud. I, I entreat everybody there, especially the Ghanaian society, to come to understand the role that we play. Uh, we need their support. And we should also come to know uh, what we do so that we can do.
and do it better. If it must be done, it must, must be, be done, done well. well. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a matter of fact, you know, I believe that it all boils down to the fact that um, you do it well. You know, once you do it well, everybody recognizes what you do, and they will come to you. You don't have to run after the money. Let the money come after you. All right, sir. Okay, so that sums it up beautifully. But is online journalism exciting? Very. Good. I think the way to go. Um, everybody should have some knowledge in online journalism because it's absolutely important. Right. That's where media is heading towards now. Okay. So great chats we've had here at the Alisa Hotel Landmark Lounge. Uh, thank you for being a part of it. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, Malik, Manasse, Omaikene Nanaya, Agumofax, uh, who is on retirement, please enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> and Stephen, uh, and this is my son. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, thanks to the crew, um, solo. My